Chapter 1. The Symbolism of Mythology Teaches Us Many Lessons Every myth told through the ages has a format, and within that format, there are deep lessons to be learned. The problem for many is that the lessons are deeply buried. Joseph Campbell explains that every myth has a hero, and that hero's journey often follows a pattern or structure. Understanding these patterns helps you to unearth the hidden messages. Myths have a common format as the hero moves along their journey. Freud regularly referred to the fact that the hidden messages in tales are taken out of context by most readers simply because the message is disguised so completely. Then we either miss the message completely or we allow it to become distorted to the point where we don't understand it. Campbell argues that myths can appear that way on the surface, but once you know the common pattern of the story, you're able to understand more clearly. Myths can often appear confusing, but once you understand the format, you have the time to listen to the message. Did you know? The oldest myth is thought to be the Epic of Gilgamesh, a poem written around 2150 BC. Chapter 2. Your Soul Cries Out for Stories Campbell comes from a long line of storytellers. His ancestors are immigrants and refugees who held the art of storytelling close to their hearts. Having been surrounded by mythical stories his whole life, Campbell also dedicated his time working as a specialist in post-traumatic stress and psychology. One thing which has stood out throughout his work is that people love to hear stories to the point where it seems as if their souls actually cry out for them. Stories help his patients to heal, help them to learn lessons from the tales they're told, but only when they truly understand the inner message. During difficult times, especially when someone is feeling confused, scared, or lost, stories help them find their feet once more. Myths and stories help people to find solace during hard times, but also teach us lessons we can use in life. His family once told him that before a child reaches 12 years of age, they should have heard and understood a story for every year of their life so far. These stories give them the knowledge and wisdom they need to overcome life's trials and tribulations. However, sitting down and telling stories to children seems to be less prevalent than it used to be. The special stories told throughout the generations by tribe members and clans are less repeated than before. All of this means that we're failing to learn from these stories. However, Campbell has noticed that all myths tend to begin with a question, something that the hero is pondering, and their journey allows them to find out the answer to that question, taking them on a path to enlightenment. Many myths begin by putting forth a question, and the journey gives the answer. Chapter 3. The Hero's Story Begins Campbell recognizes that myths all tend to follow a very similar pattern in terms of how the story flows. Whilst the content will always be wildly different, the stages of the story are much the same. Myths are all individual, but the format is often very similar. Every myth has a central character, which Campbell refers to as the hero. The journey the hero goes on is referred to as an adventure. This adventure often begins with an almost accidental meeting. For instance, Campbell mentions the story of a king who had a beautiful daughter. The girl was playing with a ball in the woods, and it fell into the water. Crying for the loss of her ball, the girl heard a voice behind her asking what was wrong. The voice belonged to a frog, who offered to find the ball for her in return for her friendship. The girl agreed, the frog fetched her ball, but upon retrieving it, she ran off and didn't give the frog a second glance. Campbell refers to this as an accident or a mistake, and this is often the start of a journey. At the starting point, the hero isn't always apparent. It could be the frog, it could be the girl, it could even be the ball. Myths are full of metaphors. 
However, at the start, the hero doesn't understand what is going to happen to them or even why. This is the call to action, the very start of their journey, which happens out of the blue and shows that the hero is ready for a transformation. The hero often finds themselves on their path or adventure spontaneously, but the reason slowly makes itself apparent. Chapter 4. Every Hero Needs a Helping Hand Throughout the journey, the hero will need a helping hand, and that often comes in the form of a supernatural individual or entity. For some, this will be an old man or woman who has powers that can't be described. It could be a nymph or a fairy, or it could be an animal spirit. This person is designed to act as a protector, someone who can guide the hero and give them help during their hardest times. Many myths feature an individual who offers assistance along the hero's journey. Campbell talks about the tribes of Africa who often speak of individuals in their stories. One story spoke of a poor man who ventured out to find a place where he could see the sunrise. An old lady helped him find his way. Often, these helpers appear in ways which you wouldn't expect, but the symbolism shouldn't be overlooked. Helpers in these stories are often all-knowing. They often give the hero a gift, some specific knowledge, or even a tool which will allow them to overcome a challenge that they know is on the horizon. Whilst myths have their own storyline, the helper is often all-knowing, offering assistance for an upcoming threat. Chapter 6. Returning home from a trial often means that everything has changed. The end of the myth means that the hero returns back to their original starting point, yet everything has changed. They're heading back to their community or their village, yet they're not the same person as before. They're wiser. They've transformed into something far beyond their original state. The end of a myth transforms the hero completely. They have been on a true journey of self-discovery. In many myths, the hero needs the help of some supernatural being to transport them back to their original point. Campbell refers to this as the magical flight. Once they return, almost from another realm entirely, the hero must pass on the wisdom they've learned to those around them. It is at this point in any myth that we can start to understand the symbolism that runs deep. Every symbol and point within a myth teaches the hero something about themselves or their journey, and it's up to the reader or the person listening to the story to understand how that relates to their own situation. The goal of the myth is to dispel the need for such life ignorance by effecting a reconciliation of the individual consciousness with the universal will. Joseph Campbell Chapter 7 Dreams and Consciousness Link Together in the Cosmogonic Cycle The symbolism within mythology makes it very difficult to ignore the fact that all of this has a very deep significance on the psychological level. Myths help us learn more about our place in the universe. This is referred to as the Cosmogonic Cycle. Myths help us to learn our place in the universe and the deeper lessons that we need to understand throughout our lives. We know that myths and dreams aren't strictly the same thing because dreams happen when you're sleeping and myths can be heard whilst you're conscious. Myths are powerful tools to help pass wisdom down through the generations, but the teachings within these myths have been carefully honed through the farthest reaches of history. Campbell describes the cosmogonic cycle as a consciousness that occurs during deep sleep. This cycle then continues into your waking hours, allowing the manifestation of lessons learned during both dreams and stories. This cycle is repeated every single day. Our conscious hours, our deep sleeping hours, before returning to consciousness once more. The cosmogonic cycle is a cycle of wakefulness deep sleep, and reawakening. During this cycle, great wisdom is obtained for those open to learning. Hindus refer to this cycle as AUM, 
A stands for the hours during wakefulness, U stands for a dream state, and M stands for deep sleep. There is also a syllable that is silent representing God. This cycle allows us to understand our place in the universe, learn the lessons myths are designed to teach us, and help to manifest positive change. Conclusion There are more myths than we can count, but each one has not only a story to tell, but many lessons to impart as well. The problem is that myths are often complicated by those who aren't open to digging a little deeper and unearthing those lessons, which often leads to the meaning being distorted. The hero with a thousand faces teaches you the general theme of a myth, and by understanding that, you can look beyond the format and dig deeper for the lessons you need to learn. Symbolism is present through every myth, tribal story, and cultural tale. Sometimes the symbols are subtle, but they usually follow the very clear pattern that Campbell describes throughout the book. Arming yourself with this knowledge gives you a far better chance at learning some of the deepest and greatest wisdom history wants you to know. Try this. 1. Choose a myth or tribal story that you have read before. Now that you understand the general format these stories follow, see if you can understand the symbolism more clearly. 2. Keep a notebook at the side of your bed and scribble down any details you remember about the dreams you had during the night. Are they trying to tell you something? 3. Take the time to read a new myth or tribal tale every week. Rather than skimming by the words, delve into them and really try and understand what the story is telling you.